Hi there, Simon from SimonWoods.com. Uh, I have four Syrah's Stroke Shirazes in front of me. Uh, what, what are they labelled? Uh, three of them are labelled Shiraz. And the first one, um, well, we'll start with the first one, which is always a good place to start. Smart Dog Syrah. Uh, you look at that label. I showed it to my wife and she said California. Uh, and I said, no, this is from Portugal. Um, so it's a 2013 Syrah uh, from the Alentejo. And if I look on the back label, I think it says uh, a, blah, 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 a small amount of Trincadera in there as well. Uh, let's give it a whirl. There's a sweet, smoky um, blackberry jam earthiness to it. Um, it smells like it's going to be uh, slightly hearty. It's 2013, so we're, we're, we're on two days before Christmas when I'm, I'm recording this. Um, and um, so it's, yes, it's, it's uh, just past its first birthday. Uh, it still smells slightly on the young and feisty side. And that um, slightly berry jam character persists when you come to taste it. Uh, I almost find it a little bit too jammy. Um, it's um, it's strange that there is a um, uh, there's a little bit of spice in there, uh, things like cinnamon and clove, uh, in with this warm, rich berry jam character. But um, the thing I miss is uh, something for those uh, for those slightly jammy edges to uh, uh, to be wrapped round. It feels like somebody has tried to do that. Uh, I don't know. That I think that's part of the idea of the of the Trincadera. Uh, but um, a Syrah for me is is not necessarily a warm climate grape. And if you're in southern Portugal, there are bits of it that that little are that little bit too warm. Uh, and then there is a touch of hardness on the finish uh, that says to me uh, that of, uh, speaks to me of acidification. Um, so I okay flavours, but um, for me not quite there. Let's see whether we uh, next three are all Australian, uh, and uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm not quite sure what order I'm doing them in. I'm doing, I think I'm doing them in, in the order of um, which I think is the coolest climate, cool climate, uh, warmer, warmest. Uh, so I'm starting in the Adelaide Hills with Sean Smith, 2012, um, and uh, let's give this one a whirl. Dark, intense, perfumed, licorice, plummy. Um, there is this um, feeling of uh, there's a cool pepperiness about it. Um, it feels like the uh, there is this what I call blue fruit flavour. Does that make sense? Blueberry, uh, black currant, uh, blackberry, but more on that maybe the loganberry, mulberry rather than the uh, uh, the the, uh, the the out and out bramble. Um, it smells like it's going to be young and slightly spicy and spiky. Um, but um, it's going to be quite yeah, refreshing, maybe the wrong word, but there's going to be a fresh edge to it. And that's very tasty. Um, yes, it's strange. When I, when I, I um, sense licorice in a wine, sometimes I think, oh, it's going to be a, that little bit baked and uh, overripe. But here yeah, it's in there along with characters like there's a bit of mint, there's a bit of eucalyptus. Uh, there's a, a floral character in there too, um, and the fruit, it's on that, what I call the blue fruit spectrum, blueberries, a um, little bit of black currants in there, um, and uh, the, of the berries, it's the, um, I suppose, I think it's the mulberry, loganberry, uh, rather than out and out blackberry, um, and uh, rounded, juicy flavours, but with this little bit of freshness that's coming through to um, liven up the finish, it's very impressive that, I do like that. Let's see whether the second Aussie ones are as impressive. So this is, again, 2012, uh, Lost Block uh, Shiraz from Heathcote and so uh, Tyrrell's. Uh, Tyrrell's winery based in Hunter Valley, uh, but they've been doing uh, wines in Heathcote for quite a long time now, 10 years? Maybe something like that? I'm not sure, but uh, uh, they've certainly uh, not they're, they're not flitted in in recent vintages and thought, oh, that looks good. They've, been, they, yeah, they've got their own vineyards there. Anyway, let's try the wine. It's another one with licorice coming through, uh, but this feels like a sweeter, heartier, uh, more ripe, rounded licorice uh, it, it flavour. And less, it, it, if I say it's less fruity, it, maybe it's less fruit freshness than, than was in the previous one. Here it does feel like it's maybe get, getting onto that um, uh, bolder, uh, broader shouldered fruit. The previous one was uh, quite slender, uh, well actually narrow waisted, wide shoulder. Here this one's got even wider shoulders. Uh, but it's probably got a wider waistline as well. Sweet, juicy, and that is just a little bit on that jammy side. Um, and it's it's the berries. Uh, I miss the black currenty freshness of the previous one. Um, uh, and um, 
yeah, there's a little bit of the uh, um, a slight earthy floral character uh, flitting in and out, um, but and, and quite a lot of uh, chewy tannin in there. Um, I like it, but I think it would, the previous one was a hard act to follow. This is a bigger, as I, I expected, it's a broader wine, uh, but I miss the finesse and elegance on the previous one. Final one. Um, and tallest bottle, is it the tallest wine? This is uh, the Dandelion Vineyards, uh, Lioness of McLaren Vale, Shiraz, 2012 again. And one of the problems with McLaren Vale Shiraz is, um, is that uh, the good ones are the, of the same proportions as the not so good ones. So they are always, always brawny, beefy styles. Um, and uh, the, the tr the, what you have to do is try and find out whether beyond the brawn there's the brain as well. Um, the previous one I wasn't so sure about here. I know that wasn't McLaren Vale, but here it does feel like the more I swirl it, uh, the more, as well as those bold, ever so slightly baked dark fruit flavours, um, there is um, uh, what I call the iron rich edge of, uh, of McLaren Vale asserting itself. It's, 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 it can be a real shame for people to dismiss these when they're young because they are uh, bold and brawny, uh, because uh, sometimes they, they, there, is, there is real class in there, which needs time and it needs, um, yeah, it needs time to come out of its shell. So I'm going to give it more swirly and then I'm going to taste it. It's actually pretty good wine though. Um, uh, and um, the black currants are there, the blackberries are there. This earthiness, this freshness as well, um, and that, that's what uh, that's what is, is absent in the uh, in the lesser McLaren Vale ones. It feels like they're over the top and jammy. There's a touch of jamminess here, but there's a fresh finish. And um, I was talking about acidification on the on the first wine. I think that they will put, done a little bit of acidification here, but it feels like it's um, it um, it doesn't feel like there's anything poking out to. Um, to take you away from the main event, which is that lovely, juicy, rounded, slightly earthy uh, perfume fruit. There's this um, floral edge to it. I was talking about, I think, violets on one of the previous ones. But here, yeah, there's, uh, there's an edge of, again, I think it's violets, but uh, uh, something there that is, is making you think uh, there's a lovely wine here for now. But also there is um, everything is in balance there to, to keep it going for, uh, for a while yet. Never quite sure with wines like this whether I want to drink them really uh, when, they're, when they're quite young and still have this vibrancy. Because uh, the danger is when, like, if, you are, uh, if, if things are built um, to uh, uh, impress when they're young, sometimes when they, they get that little bit older, uh, they go to seed a little bit. I don't think that this is going to go to seed soon, but I would be drinking it sooner rather than later. I think it may be. I, I, I'm all very prepared to try when it's 20 years old and go, actually, I got that wrong. But I would prefer to see this maybe in two or three years time rather than in 20 years time. Uh, I'm going to have another sip. Yes, I like that. Um, and... Um, do I prefer it to the Sean Smith though? Um, I, I'm, they're, they're two different beasts. Um, I think that uh, this is the richer, heartier one. The other one is um, a, a bit more elegant. Both as concentrated as each other, um, and one fuller bodied. And uh, I would probably favour the Sean Smith, but that is purely personal preference. I, I, if I were to uh, be scoring them in a competition, I, I wouldn't give them marks too far apart. Maybe uh, in marks for my website, I will give the Sean Smith a little dipped higher, but uh, not all that much in it. They're both fine examples of Australian Shiraz. Um, and um, yeah, they were looking pretty good. See you soon.